flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I wanna tell you all about the seeds that I'm starting this week. But first I wanna show you, I'm so proud of a hard day's work I put in yesterday. It was a good 12 hour day, five hours of which was spent mowing and weeding inside the deer fence. I had been neglecting inside the deer fence for so long because of all of the work that I was putting everywhere else. Being able to look in there and actually see the flowers that I'm growing gives me peace now so I'm very excited about the effort that went into that so let's go check it out this is what has me excited with the exception of that blue <laughs> bucket back there that I cannot lift up the plastic is so deteriorated from being left out that I can't I had to roll it out of the way yesterday when we were mowing but I was able to mow in between all of the rows and it just looks so much cleaner and neater and you know I just it makes me so happy and the same thing with this. So this is my Lysianthus. Lysianthus, more Lysianthus. Phlox, Cosmos. Let's go on a Cosmo tour. Wowie, I've got several varieties. Let's talk about them. This beauty is a double click cranberry and they kind of start out this really dark color. And then if I zoom out and look up a little bit, oop, oop. They fade out to this amazing, beautiful, hot pink, but it's like a pale hot pink. It's simply gorgeous. Speaking of simply gorgeous, let's take a look down at what we call the Rose Picote. There she is. Oh, we have several and they're just amazing. Now this variety is belly button height on me. I am five foot five and a half. Oh yeah. There's another one with the deeper veining. I am um, always, always a huge fan of Cosmos. Do they make a great cut flower? Not exactly. I believe four days is the vase life. You can like sear the ends with boiling water and or like a, a flame, like a torch. And that is supposed to extend the vase life. But I love Cosmos for the greenery. I will use these side shoots in bouquets. I absolutely think they add the most unique texture. We had a bit of a storm last night, but this is the apricot lemonade patch. Gotta be honest with you, a little disappointed in the height. It's about half the height of the other two. And uh, it, it is beautiful though. It's a little rain tattered. Let me find a good one. So they're sort of like a pink, pale yellow on the outside. Like this one aged, I'll move pan over just a little bit. You see that right there? It has that pale yellow inside. So it's an apricot yellow. Some have a higher pink tones and some have higher yellow tones. So it really all depends on the flower. I'm getting a great mix here. Some have more pink, some have more yellow. Like this one down here. Like that one just was really apricot yellowy. Um, but like I said, we had about two inches of rainfall last night during some storms and I did a number on the petals. As you can see, we definitely have lilies that are ready to go. I actually have a fridge full of them. I'm hoping to hold them for till next week because I want to start my summer CSA. So, yep, lots of lilies. I actually have to come in and harvest these and also add them to my fridge pile. So these are the third and fourth succession planting of the gladiolas. And that's the space for the rest of them. I need to till up the soil and get them in the ground. I've been spacing them about two weeks apart this season. So over here, I have some really amazing looking bells of Ireland. Check that out. Wow, I'm really excited to harvest this. This will be my first harvest. There are quite a few of them that are ready. And people were asking me if these were one cuts. They can be, but they also branch out from several places on the bottom, and those will also be future bells of Ireland. These are amazing fillers. They do say this green color, and they smell like apples to me. Thank you for tolerating my quick tour. <laughs> I'm really, really just happy with the way it looks. It is muggy out, guys. It's like 80 degrees, which isn't hot, but the air is so thick, so thick. I decided to wear a black shirt, and my black shirt says, what would Dave do? <laughs> I finally made a shirt um, in honor of Dave Dowling, cut flower guru. He is one of the most knowledgeable flower farmers, and he actually works for Ball Color Link. He's my representative there, um, but he also teaches courses on uh, cut flowers and stuff like that, and I've taken his courses before. But Dave, so he emailed me last week and said he wanted to send me some samples, some seeds of a new variety of flowering kale that's coming out next year and so he's sending me those seeds so i have a list of things that i'm starting this week and flowering kale 
it's on the list. So we'll talk about the varieties that he's, he's sending me right now and he also gave me detailed instruction on how to start those seeds. Let's run down what I'm gonna be starting. So I've got a whole bunch of flowering kale. I have an orange calendula. This is a Baker Creek um, seed packet. Orange King. Now last year I started my calendula in early spring, late winter, and I was cutting it now. So I was harvesting it in late June, early July. I wanted to see if I could go ahead and start the Orange King later so that I could have that beautiful orange vibrant color for fall. So, and they're like a 60, 70 day crop, and I have plenty of time left in my season in order to make that happen. So I also am gonna start some more Orlea. Orlea is an absolutely prolific, filler and I have a ton of it. I'm looking at it right now. I have a ton of it, but I also want to have it throughout the season. So I'm starting more of that now and I'm starting that in a 200 plug tray. That's what I did in the late winter and that's what I'm doing now. So I'm starting another 200 of those and then the, the flower and kale mix, I'm starting in a 72 plug tray and I'll tell you how I'm gonna do that in just a minute. The calendula is also in a 72 plug tray. Now I have a lot of people asking me how I differentiate between what I would start in a soil block and what I would start in a plug tray. And honestly, the answer is pretty simple. Do you see the size of these seeds? I don't soil block these. If the seeds are massive <laughs> and they don't fit in a soil block, they go in a plug tray. It's just as simple as that. There is one other thing that I determine in order to use a plug tray or a soil block, and that is if the seed says requires half inch of soil on top of it or heavily cover seed, then I would use a plug tray because if you have a soil block, really the only thing you could do is lightly cover with vermiculite, which I did do with flocks. My flocks that you see, a lot of people have been asking me about their flocks germination because they did not have good luck. So what I did with flocks, I soil blocked it, I lightly covered it with vermiculite, and then I put it on a top shelf in my grow room in the basement. I did not put it on heat, and I just let it sit. And about a week later, I checked, and it was germinated. And I had pretty much 100% germination on all of my new seed packet varieties. I had horrible germination on sugar stars, but that packet was a couple of years old. What else am I starting? Oh, I'm succession starting my sunflowers. I have been doing that every week for the past six weeks, and now I have uh, several hundred to start this week, which I'll be doing. And I'm just kind of picking varieties. I've got a whole, like, I've got, I think 15, seven, I think 17 varieties because a company sent me some more. Um, the cicada. I want to thank Tony, Tony from Whitesboro. <laughs> this guy lives next to me, works for a seed company, and when he has samples, he drops them off to me. So these are uh, Sunbright Golden Yellow, Sunbright Supreme, and also this um, Vincent's Choice. So I've been starting these seeds from cicada, um, you know, intermittently throughout the season. So I'll have those to share with you guys as well. Um, one other thing that I really wanted to start is um, yarrow. I know it's an odd time of year to start yarrow, but yarrow is a perennial and I want to be able to put little yarrows into the ground to see if they come back next year. I have about 50 of them in that patch that I just showed you that I started early this spring, but I'd like to establish a larger yarrow patch. So I'm going to go ahead and start some yarrow and I will be soil blocking these. These will not be going in plug trays because the seed is basically air. Yeah. Like, like there's there's a thousand seeds there. Like, they're tiny. <laughs> I'm also starting. Oh, these ones are cool. These are called Sunray, and these seeds were a thousand million dollars. And they are dwarf sunflowers that flower all the way up from the ground. I'm really excited. I completely lost these. I ordered these from Burpee. Couldn't find them for months, and then I was looking for something else, and I found them like underneath my dresser in my bedroom. I have no idea why. But anyway, I did start them. They are already germinated. They're over in my uh, garage right now, keeping them away from the chipmunk because eat everything. But so these are only growing to a height of about 22 inches, but I thought they'd be kind of cool for maybe some photo shoots with some babies and toddlers. You know how you see those people getting their pictures in a sunflower field and the sunflowers are always towering over their heads. I was hoping that maybe I could get some kids to do pictures with sunflowers that are their height. I thought that would make for better pictures. Oh, this was called Sun Ray Yellow Hybrid, and I, I'm not kidding. I mean, I'm joking where they weren't a hundred million dollars, but they were very expensive for just 50 seeds. I'm also starting uh, Scarlet Runner Beans for fun. I forgot I had these too. Uh, these are only 45 to 50 at five days uh, to harvest, so that would be fun. I might put these on the, the trellis in there. I've got a couple trellises in the garden. Yeah, obviously, 
I'm gonna direct seed these. Look, oh my God. These are like horse pills. They're huge. Also, I'm starting a lot of vegetables. So my vegetables in the garden have been slightly neglected, except when it comes to tomatoes. I did start about 700 beans. I've got a bean patch started in there, but I also wanna start these. These are my favorite, the dragon tongue beans. These are just for snacking. So I'm gonna put these in the ground. They're a short crop. I'll have them before you know it, I'll be snacking on beans. But I also started a ton of cucumbers because those are between 45 and 55 days really to harvest. So I've got cucumbers going. I've got some, um, oh, some, Kajari melons, I grew those prolifically last year. They were amazing. So I'm definitely growing those again. Um, but they're little babies though. I'm like, I'm a little late when it comes to the game. I have confidence that all this stuff will grow though. So fingers crossed that I'll have a good cucumber harvest because a fresh cucumber out of, my, out of the garden is just, it's pretty special. Okay, back to the flowering kale. So I do not have the varieties that Dave is um, sending me. They're shipping via UPS. They should arrive tomorrow. So I do have a couple of other varieties that I got from GeoSeed and uh, I have the flowering cabbage crane feather mix and I have the flowering kale elegance mix. The varieties that he is sending me are from Taki Seeds and they're brand new. They're called Ruffles. Dave shared with me these photos of ruffles and wow, I love flowering kale. It's absolutely gorgeous and I think it just makes a really unique addition to bouquets. So kale, like the vegetable, is a cool season crop. So you plant it now, this week, and it will thrive through the fall and it will tolerate those early frosts. It's definitely, and actually, a lot of people say it starts to get its coloring and its uniqueness after it goes through a frost. I also saw that Dave was also sending these seeds to Lisa Mason Ziegler, so you can follow along with her too as she, she grows these. She's in a Virginia, much different climate than I am, so we'll see the difference in, in that. It's also something that the deer love to nibble on, so I will be planting these inside my deer fence with protection. I will also be putting frost cover over top of these, not only to prevent frost, which I don't have to worry about, fingers crossed for a couple of months, but it also helps to keep the bugs off of these. If you, any, if you know anything about brassicas, like the cabbages, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbage worms just destroy it. There are a lot of bugs that are really attracted to these plants. So I'm gonna be using frost cover to prevent bug damage on these plants. So how am I gonna start them? Well, Dave sent along some instructions and he told me in each plug, and I'm using this 72 plug tray, and the I'm using Vermont compost, Fort V, that's what I have left, I'm out of ProMix, so I'm using my Fort V in my plug tray here. And he says to start them three seeds in each plug tray. And then when I plant them out to plant three, whoa, it's windy. Flying seeds, flying cabbage. <laughs> okay. And then when I plant them out, he wants me to plant three in a six inch space. So they're very tightly planted and that's because it, that is what gives them the height. They're gonna want to stretch for the sun and outcompete each other and that's what will give these flowering kale their height to put into bouquets. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these seeds started. So I just did this last one with Crane. I did a succession of sunflowers. I did Vincent's Choice. It's a cicada variety. And then I started some Orlea and I also started some of the, it's labeled right here. Nope, it's not labeled. Why wouldn't it be labeled? What did I even just start? The Calendula. <laughs> that one is the Calendula. So I'm gonna bring these over to the hose, give them a little bit of a drink. I mean, it was a little bit pre-moistened, but it looks like it dried out fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna give a little sprinkle of water and then I'll be waiting for these to grow. Now in two weeks after germination, I'll put the kale into a newly prepared bed. And like I said earlier, I'll be putting three of these plugs in a six inch square. So basically little triangles inside this six inch square. And that is what Dave Dowling recommended. What would Dave do? That's what Dave would do. He recommended putting them like that in a six inch square because that way they'll grow vertically and have that height that we want for the bouquets. Tomorrow in the mail, I'll be getting the new Ruffles variety seed and I'll start them this exact same way. So we'll have some ornamental kale forever. Before I go, I wanted to show you guys 
some new Rebecchias that I've been harvesting and I've been harvesting crazy amounts of snapdragons and Orlea and Phlox but this one right here look at that beauty I just love the just the hints and this came from the Sahara Rebecca variety I absolutely love it the other ones all look like this I'll show you guys I just grab all the Rebecca's so you can see the this is not all of them but this is all the ones that I have right here in front of me Ooh, I have one of the bronze snapdragon do you guys I don't know if anybody else's snapdragons are like this but that's my hand and that's a snapdragon this is the um, Madame butterfly cherry bronze this is the cherry bronze snapdragon it's got like a pink hue with that orange throat it's fantastic so stay tuned for some updates on the ornamental kale I've never grown it before so this will be a first for me this year I'm very excited those the two packets I started already were from geo seed and then the the new seed I'm gonna be getting is uh, from Takai make sure I said that right one moment Spring, um, summer, winter, and fall. I'm watching a YouTube video the changing seasons to see how to pronounce the name of the seed company. Sun's light. It's getting, it's getting long. I'm gonna say it eventually. Say it! Safer, better tasting. No. Say the name! It's pretty. It's really well done. Advanced technologies refined over many coming. years. We are working to bring about a new age in Who? Who are you? Tell me your name! Founded in 1835, we are Taki-i. 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 It's a double I. Taki-i. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much for sticking around. We'll see you soon. I'm gonna need a battery change. I'm running out of fuel. Who wants to go swimming? There's the pool stuff right there. I need like a place to do videos other than, well, this is where I live. You're gonna see the things that are on my porch occasionally. It's a pellet stove pipe. We don't have a pellet stove anymore, but we got a pellet stove pipe. Pipe, pipe, I said pipe. <laughs> what is that bird? I do not know that bird. I must zoom in on that bird. I don't know that bird. What is it? I can't zoom anymore. This is as zoomy as it gets. What is it? Okay, well, it's something. I don't know what it is, but it's something. The bird is aggressively trying to hide from me. It's over there on the fence, but I can't. It's too far. I'm over here chasing birds. Anyway, if I find out what that is, I'll let you know. Hmm, it was bigger than the tree swallows that I have.